all right what is up everybody hope everyone is doing well i'm back with another video and in today's video we're gonna go over timing diagram questions and how to fill out this chart here at the bottom um based on the circuit shown below okay so if we can see the circuit on the top uh just off first glance it can appear to be a bit daunting but i can assure you it's actually very very simple once you know what you're doing okay so here we have a partially filled out chart. Um, we've got some hints in our question, and then we're gonna fill out the rest of them for A, B, and C. And we're gonna go over how to do that. So first things first, the first thing we have to notice whenever we do a timing diagram circuit shown below is we have to look at the clock edge. And as you can see here, we have a little, we have a little triangle here. And what this triangle means is that this circuit is rising edge triggered. Okay. Now, what does it mean to be rising edge triggered? It means that whenever the clock is at its rising edge, so this part, so the clock is rising here, it's rising here, 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 here. That's when we make changes in our X, A, B, and C is this rising edge triggered. So whenever the clock is on its rising edge, that's when a change is made in the circuit, if that makes sense. Okay. Now there's also different types of circuits. So this is a rising edge. Then there's also a lower uh, edge. So the um, decreasing edge triggered, and that is drawn by if there's a circle in the box and then there's a triangle. Oops. Let me kind of draw that better for you guys. So, you know, something of the lower edge triggered when there's a circle, then we have the box and then the triangles on the inside. So if there's a circle in the front, that means it's a lower edge triggered. So these are two things that we have to look forward to, uh, to analyze the problem. But we can see in our specific problem that we have a rising edge triggered circuit. Now let's get into how to try and solve this one. So we have right now, um, our X is already filled out for us. So when our X values is, and now if we can pay attention to this top corner over here, this is an inverter. So whatever X is said to be in this, what a is going to be so it comes through here. This inverter comes and it goes through a to what a is going to be. The inverter is whatever X is opposite. So whenever X is the opposite, that is what a is. So let's start off with that. So we can fill out our a line. So we can, if we can follow the course of the path of this electrical circuit, X comes and then it gets inverted. So it becomes the opposite number. And this opposite value is what then is what a becomes, right? So let's take a look. Maybe we can have a real example to show you to better understand. Now, if you look at a, so we're going to pay attention. Well, let me erase these first. So we're going to pay attention. We have X here and we said it's a rising edge triggered, right? So we're going to pay attention to when the clock is on its rising edge. So all the rising edge is what we're going to pay attention to. So on the rising edge, so when the clock is on its rising edge, we can see that X lines down here and it's zero. So X is zero at the rising edge. So if X is zero at the rising edge and I said it gets inverted and it goes into a, what do you think a is going to be? Well, the opposite of zero is one in digital circuits. So that means we're going to have to draw one here. So we're going to connect these two lines and this is going to be the one line as you can see here. So then this is a is going to be one and now a is going to be one up until here because this is when the next rising edge comes. So it aligns through here to the bottom So until the next rising edge. So a is one until the next rising edge. Now, if we see the part that's already filled out, let's just go over that. So when the rising edge happens again, so when the rising edge happens again, we can see X is zero again. So when X is zero, that means a is the opposite because we have the inverter here. And that means a is going to become one again up until the next rising edge, which is over here. All right. Now on this rising edge, we see that X is equal to one. When so if X is equal to one and it becomes inverted, then that one becomes zero. That means a becomes zero. So we're going to draw a line downwards to a. I want to connect it until the next rising edge, which is over here. Now, they already kind of gave us a hint over there because it's already filled out. But at this rising edge, 
x is equal to 0. So zero, opposite of 0 is 1. So we can connect this line up and have that 1 go across to the next rising edge. And at this rising edge, you can see that x is also again equal to 0. So when it's equal to 0, it stays at 1 until the last rising edge over here. And on this rising edge, we can see that x is equal to 1. And the opposite of 1 because of the inverter becomes 0. And then a becomes 0. And we can finish it off over there. So that is what, oops. So that is what our A line looks like. So at the rising edge triggered, our A line looks like this. And it's basically the opposite of whatever X is. This is the simplest of the three lines. So if you have any questions, please comment down below. So our A is basically the opposite of X because of this X inverter over here. Now let's get into the next line, which is B. Now B is a bit more difficult or different, I should say, not so much difficult because there's an OR gate over here. So B is the OR of X and A. So we can see that X travels here, right? Then A travels here and it's an OR gate with an inverter. So that means basically whatever the OR value is, we have to invert the value. And then whatever this value is, is what B becomes. So B is equal to the OR of X and A, right? So the OR of X and A. Or I should put the X OR actually because it's inverters. Ooh. So we can say B is equal to the OR of X and A inverted, right? Because there's an inverting bubble at the end. Inverted. Now, let's see what we can do here. So, we clear this up real quick. Oops, that's not the eraser. If we can clear this up real quick, we see that X OR with A and then it's inverted. So if we have a basic OR gate, we know that any OR gate basically means that it's equal to one if either X or A is equal to one. As long as one of the values are equal to one, then the whole gate is equal to one. Or if none of the values are equal to one, then the whole gate is equal to zero. But because there's an inverting bubble over here, that means whatever value we get, it ends up being the opposite for what B is going to be equal to. So if our OR gate equals one, because it's an inverting bubble, it becomes zero. And if our OR gate equals zero, because of this inverting bubble, it then becomes one. So that's what B is going to be. So using that uh, knowledge and equation, let's find out what B is equal to. So if we start with B, and it's important to remember, this is still a rising edge triggered uh, diagram. So we have to look at the clock rising edge and then go based off of that. <coughs> so if we go off the rising edge of the clock, we can see that the rising edge, X is equal to zero, right? So at the first rising edge, X is equal to zero. Uh, actually, let me try and use a different color so we don't get confused. So let's use uh, red. So we can see at the rising edge, X is equal to zero, right? At the first rising edge, X is equal to zero. At, this, at the first rising edge, we said that A is equal to one, right? So at X is equal to zero and an A is equal to one at the first rising edge. So if we have an OR gate, let's draw a quick OR gate over here. Oh, that looks terrible. Sorry, my artistic skills are not really there. So if we draw an OR gate over here, we have a zero and a one, this gate then becomes one, right? Because there's a one here, because there's one, one within the OR gate, this whole OR gate becomes one. Now, but because there's an inverter, this then becomes zero because the one inverts into a zero. Does that make sense? So because the one inverts into a zero, then we get B is equal to zero all the way until the next rising edge gate, rising edge triggered gate which is over here. Now, if we look at this one, when the clock rises, we will go down this line and follow it. We have X is equal to zero again, and we have A is equal to one again. And then what do we get? We get a zero again, which is why the bottom line is already filled out. As we get the same examples, what we did here as the one gets inverted into a zero due to the OR gate rules. Now, if we keep going until this rising edge gate over here, we get that X is equal to one, and we get that A is also equal to one. So if x is equal to 1 and a is also equal to 1, 
what happens? Then we cut the OR gauge equal to one again, but then it becomes a zero. And why does it become zero? Uh, because one of the ones are in the OR gate, which makes it one, and then it get inverted into zero. Does that make sense? Because if there's both ones in the OR gate, like it is here, this becomes one, inverted, becomes zero. So that means B stays zero up until the next one. Now it's already kind of filled out as a hint that it goes to one, but let's see why it does that. So on this rising edge, we see that X is equal to zero and A is also equal to zero. And the, and the reason why I say that is because I know it seems like it's going up, but it, if it's on the line, we always go to the lowest value. And what I mean by that is if the line is going upwards, if it's ascending, we go to the lowest value, but if it's descending, we stay with the top most value, if that makes sense. So if it's ascending, if the line is on its way up, for example, if it's going and it's on its way up at this point, if, because it's going on its way up, we always, uh, look at the bottom most value, but if it's on its way down, we always assume it's the top most value. So because this line for a is ascending, we look at the bottom most value. So we get zero and a zero. So if we or zeros, let's see what we get. So if we or two zeros, we end up getting a zero, correct? Because there's no one present to make it one, but inverting that zero then becomes a one, right? So then the B value then becomes a one until the next rising edge triggered uh, level. And on this rising edge triggered level, we get X is equal to zero. And then we get A is equal to one. So if we have a zero and one, if we remember before from what I just erased, if we have a zero and one, the OR gate results in a one, but then when it's inverted, it goes back down to zero because of the inverter that's there, the inverting bubble. So we have that up until the next rising edge over here. Now on this rising edge, we have X is equal to one and see as over here, we have A is equal to one because when it's descending, we assume it's the top most value when it's descending form. We look at the top corner. So we have one and one. Now when two OR gates have one and one, it results in a one and inverted, it becomes a zero. So then it just stays a zero all the way through. And then that is what our B line ends up looking like. All right. So now that we know what our B line looks like, let's take a look at our C line. Let's go and erase all this real quick. See? So we can work on our C line. So our C line, if you guys can take a look, our C end of actually ends up having an AND gate over there. Oops, sorry. So our C ends up actually instead of an OR gate it has an AND gate. And if we end up, if we remember what our AND gate rules are, our AND gate rules are that the AND gate equals to one if both X and B are equal to one. So if both X and B are equal to one, then our AND gate equals to one. But because there's also another inverting bubble here, whatever value we get, it just becomes the opposite value. So if the AND gate initially equals one, it becomes zero because of the inverting bubble. And if our AND gate initially equals to zero, it becomes one because of the inverting bubble. All right. So knowing that, let's see what we can do over here. So look, look at C. So C, let's take the, the equation we're going to get. C is the AND gate of x so it's the and of x and b and it's inverted okay so c is the and of x and b inverted so now let's see what we get so if we start at the rising edge once again right so if we start at the rising edge of the clock because it's a rise edge triggered flip-flop circuit if we start at the clock rising edge we go to x so X is zero over here and what's B? B is also zero. So if we have an AND gate of zero and zero, it results in zero because there's no one, but then this becomes inverted and then this becomes one. Does that make sense? So AND of zero and zero becomes zero, then it becomes inverted and it becomes one. So that means this C goes to one and stays like that until the next rising edge. So on this rising edge over here, we see that X is equal to zero and A is equal to one, right? So, oh, so sorry, if X is equal to zero, that means B is also equal to zero. 
right? So sorry, don't make some, don't make the same mistake as me and mix up the lines. Make sure to keep it the same. So our, our formula for C is and of X and B, not the and of X and A. So if we look at the and of X and B, we have an X equal to zero and B equal to zero. So we get the same case as we have over here, zero, zero, it equals zero initially, and then it becomes inverted to one. So this is why the one line continues over. Now at the next rising edge, we go down, we see X is equal to one, and then we get B is equal to zero. Now, what do we know about AND gates? When it's one and zero, when it's one and zero, we know that it still equals zero because for an AND gate to equal one, both the numbers in this two input AND gate have to equal one for it to be one. So when it becomes zero, it becomes inverted and becomes one. So we can just continue drawing a line across in the one line for C until the next rising edge, which is over here. And then they already fill it in for us as one, but let's make, make sure that they didn't make any mistakes. So for this one, we have X is equal to zero. Then we have B, make sure to remember over here that we don't count the top corner. When it's ascending, we count the bottom corner. When it's ascending, we count the bottom corner. So B is also equal to zero. Right, so if we get zero, zero, the AND gate equals zero, then it becomes inverted and becomes one. So that's why we have this line across here. In this next rising edge over here, we get X is equal to zero. Then we also get B is equal to one because when it's descending, we count the top corner, if you remember from the last example, right? So then if we get an AND gate with zero and one, it initially results in zero, but it becomes inverted and becomes one. So it sticks like that until the next rising edge. Now on this rising edge, we get X is equal to one and we get B is equal to zero. And then it's one and zero it initially becomes zero, but when it's inverted, it becomes one. So we just carry this out and it comes like this. And now if we erase all of this stuff, this is what your final diagram should look like. Now, I hope this made sense to you guys drawing this flip flop circuit diagram. Uh, as you can see, it actually was not that hard when you actually know what you're doing and you create the proper equations to know what you're looking for. And ultimately, this is what we have. We have our X line, which is given to us, our A, B, and C. And if you guys are wondering what the synchronous reset is for, um, that's usually there in most flip-flop time diagram circuits, but it's mostly irrelevant when it comes to rising edge and lower edge triggered flip-flop circuits. Um, so also make sure to look for if there's a rising edge or a lower edge. And this is basically how you fill out the three lines for A, B, and C. All right? Hope you guys enjoyed the video and you guys understood. If you liked it, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure to comment down below. And if you guys want me to cover any more topics that you guys specifically need or specific problems, please just comment down below or email me and I'll make sure to make a video topic on it so you guys can get the best. And also if you guys have any specific questions or topics that you guys want me to cover, please comment down below or send me links to things through the comments and I'll make sure to make a video on it as soon as possible. All right, guys, thanks for watching.